Lockheed Martin, the world's largest defense contractor in terms of revenue, emerged victorious in a competitive U.S. Army contract over its rival, General Dynamics Mission Systems. The contract entails the development of a comprehensive electronic warfare, signals intelligence, and cyber system which the Army considers crucial for its deep sensing strategy. Both Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics Mission Systems were engaged in preliminary design and software demonstrations as stated in the contract announcements made in August. Viewers may note that the Army last year awarded Lockheed and General Dynamics an initial contract to develop designs for the system during an 11-month competition period. In this video, Defense Updates reports on the long-range electronic warfare system being developed by the U.S. Army. Let's get into the details. The TLS-EAB Tactical Long-Range Electronic Warfare Signals Intelligence and Cyber System is designed to cater to the needs of larger Army formations such as divisions and corps consisting of thousands of troops and substantial firepower. It holds significant importance as a vital component of the deep sensing strategy, enabling the identification, monitoring and engagement of adversaries at extended and secure distances. This capability is imperative due to the presence of technologically advanced forces like China and Russia which require the Army to operate with enhanced situational awareness and increased standoff capabilities. Lockheed Martin is already working on TLS-EAB's smaller, more tactically focused sister known as the Terrestrial Layer System Brigade Combat Team or TLS-BCT and an airborne jammer dubbed Multifunction Electronic Warfare Air Large or MFEWAL. Dion Vergitz, Lockheed's Vice President of Spectrum Convergence, said in a statement on June 27, the U.S. Army's Family of Systems concept is a proven model for developing and delivering converged cyber and electronic warfare technologies into the hands of the warfighter quickly, cost-efficiently, with lower risk and at the speed of relevance. As per Virgitz, the next step for TLS-EAB prototyping will feature a deliberate focus on soldier feedback and open digital infrastructure to ensure the system can be easily tailored for specific mission requirements. Lockheed will build a prototype of the TLS-EAB at its facility in Syracuse, New York in the next 21 months the deal is worth $37 million. The U.S. Army has recently adjusted its approach to the TLS-EAB, acknowledging that a uniform solution may not be suitable for all scenarios. It recognizes that a platform designed for operations in Europe may not be the most appropriate tool for the operating environment in Asia. This shift in perspective highlights the importance of tailoring the TLS-EAB to specific regional requirements and considering the unique characteristics and challenges of each operational theater. As per U.S. Army budget documents, the service plans to spend $859,000 for procurement in fiscal 2024 for TLS-EAB, which will be a new start program. It also plans to spend $66.4 million on research and development in 2024 which will go towards integration, demonstration, experimentation, prototyping, and vendor testing, among other activities. Total R&D funding for the effort over the next five years is projected to be $175.8 million. U.S. Army is using a middle-tier acquisition approach for the program to rapidly deliver an integrated ground intelligence, electronic warfare, and cyber capability on multiple platform types to align with maneuver forces, the budget documents state. The initial deployment of the first unit is planned for the third quarter of 2025, while production and fielding are anticipated to take place between 2026 and 2030. 
Furthermore, the Army has recently issued a request for proposals specifically focused on acquiring a dismounted capability associated with TLS-BCT, tactical long-range electronic warfare, signals intelligence, and cyber system at the brigade combat team level. This request reflects the Army's commitment to expanding the TLS capabilities to individual dismounted soldiers, enhancing their effectiveness and situational awareness on the battlefield. Also, the Army is currently soliciting bids for the subsequent phase of its electronic warfare planning and management tool. Raytheon has been involved in the development work of this tool thus far. The system is recognized as the essential component that integrates all electronic warfare capabilities on the battlefield. It acts as a command and control planning capability, enabling forces to visualize the potential impacts of such weapons and devise strategies to safeguard their forces and systems from being disrupted or jammed during operations. Dion Vergutz said in a release, The U.S. Army's Family of Systems concept is a proven model for developing and delivering converged cyber and electronic warfare technologies into the hands of the warfighter quickly, cost-efficiently, with lower risk, and at the speed of relevance. Moving into this next phase, we're going to continue to embrace soldier touch points to drive the design while leveraging a proven DevSecOps pipeline and an open architecture that will create a highly interoperable, configurable, 21st century security solution that can be easily tailored for specific mission requirements. Electronic Warfare EW, stands as one of the most crucial and technologically demanding elements of contemporary military operations. It encompasses a wide range of activities and technologies aimed at denying, disrupting, or exploiting the use of electromagnetic spectrum by adversaries. In the modern battlefield, where information and communication systems play a pivotal role, EW capabilities have become essential for maintaining a competitive edge. It involves both defensive measures to protect friendly forces from electronic threats and offensive operations to neutralize or exploit the enemy's electronic systems. The complexity of EW arises from the continuous advancements in technology, which constantly introduce new communication methods, sensors, and electronic systems. Effectively conducting EW operations requires a deep understanding of the electromagnetic spectrum, sophisticated equipment, and skilled personnel capable of analyzing, intercepting, and countering electronic threats. The need for such technology emerges from the evolving threat landscape, where advanced adversaries are compelling the U.S. Army to operate at extended distances. As a result, the Army requires the capability to sense at greater ranges and at higher levels of command. The multi-prong approach is likely to bear fruits in the medium to long term. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.